In de-stashing some of my old scrapbooking supplies, I had these tags, and they're very dimensional because they've got ribbons and wires and this really thick textured stuff on them and eyelets and all kinds of things. And they're just real chunky tags used for scrapbooking. And I thought these would make some really super cute paper dolls or paper doll ornaments for my paper doll tree. So I just thought I'd do a quick video showing you what I come up with. As I've shown in previous paper doll videos, I get the um, the pieces that I use in all different places. Some are from um, the Etsy store where you can go in and look for articulated paper dolls or collage paper doll kits. Um, I use magazine images of arms and legs and faces and bodies and things. Um, rubber stamps, all kinds of different things, but this particular one I'm going to use I found on Pinterest, and it was a free printable on Pinterest, so I printed it out, I colored her face, I added the um, ponytail hairstyle that was not on it, so I added that to it, and I did glue it down to cardboard and cut it out to make it a little stiffer. And then on the legs, they're just plain, and so what I've done is drawn on some cute little um, shoes, kind of like ballet lace-up shoes. But this is what I'm going to use, I think, to make this kit. So you could go on Pinterest and you could look for free printable paper doll kits and see what you can find. There's all kinds of free printables on there. Some of them are links to um, ones that you can purchase in Etsy and some of them are free, but this one did not cost anything. And I think I'm going to use this tag. I like these eyelets. They would be perfect for adding uh, legs to. So what I'm going to do is remove the sticker on the back that makes it um, something where you can stick it onto your scrapbooking page. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And it's basically just foam core tape on the back and it's super sticky and it's on there really good. So I'm just kind of taking the edge of my scissors, my little Tim Holtz ideology scissors and just scraping that off. So we certainly don't need that on there. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to cut this bottom and I'm going to cut it closer to those little doodads like that. I like that. That's cute. I have an idea in mind. And that's what the fun of this is for me. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I love to find bits and pieces of this, that, and the other to create these out of, you know, so make them out of different things that are things you wouldn't normally think of and things that might be um, kind of fun and unique to try. And it just makes them whimsical and interesting. So at the top here, what I'm going to do is just take my scissors and just cut a little notch out like that where I can put that right up here like that. And really you could do this with any tag, so this is a kind of a fun idea that could be workable for any tag. I just like these um, decorative tags because they already have interesting doodads on them for creating this doll. So the bottom half of this I don't need. I'm going to cut it off at the hips. I don't need that piece, so I cut that piece off. And I'm going to save it because you never know when it will come in handy for something else or another doll. So that's going to be like this. And this tag paper is a little bit thin because it basically was designed just to go on a scrapbook page. So I am going to um, glue it down to some uh, piece of file, old file folder that I've, I'm upcycling or recycling. I don't want to cover those holes. I'm just trying to make it a little more sturdy. And I don't want to cover these holes down here. 
And then I'm going to let that dry and just trim that back out again. That'll just make it a little more sturdy. So the next thing I'm going to do is to cut out the pieces that I want to use. And I'm not going to use the upper arms or the upper legs because it would make it really big. I think when you put this doll together, she ends up being like 16 inches long. So for the sake of one of my cute little whimsical paper dolls, I'm only going to use the bottom part of the leg and the ar part of the arm with the hand, the forearm and hand. And that's okay because it will, it'll still look cute to have these arms and legs just as they are and it's going to make it big enough, you know, not too big. So I'm cutting out these pieces because I'm going to do my typical thing that I've done in a million other little paper doll videos where I put matte gel medium down to a piece of lightweight cardboard or file folder that's upcycled and glue them down, let them dry, and then trim it out. And when you trim it all out at one time, you get a really nice clean edge. So that's what I'm going to do to make my arms and my legs a little bit stiffer and thicker to work with so they're not so flimsy just on cardstock. I'm going to use this cute paper napkin image to add that to this um, plain colored tag so that it'll look more fancy, more decorative and cover that up so it's not kind of a, a skin color. Use a water brush to kind of um, remove the pieces that I want to use. Just get it wet and then tear it. And I think I'm going to cut this straight across because I don't want to cover that pretty textured piece that's on my tag. I really like that. So if I cut this across, then I can put this down right up to that edge. I love Mod Podge and napkins or using matte gel medium or Mod Podge on napkins. It just turns out so pretty. And then I'm going to let that dry. These are dry and before I cut them out I'm going to color them with uh, Neo Color 2. I'm using Flesh. That is the name of it. Flesh. You can see that. It's Flesh. And the number on it is 7500.042. And then a water brush and I'm just going to add some color to these. Just color them with my water brush tipping off the crayon. So I'm going to go ahead and color these images in. Let it dry again and then cut them out. So here they are colored and cut out and the coloring is just subtle and on camera you really can't see it. See down here is not colored and this up here is. I just put one single layer just to just to add a little bit of tint because a lot of it's going to get covered up. So Anyway, here's my tag with my napkin, and if I flip it over and from the back side, I can just trim that off. <clears throat> you can see what you're doing when you flip it over and cut from the back. This would be so cute on any tag. You could take any manila tag and 
Mod Podge a napkin to it and cut it out and make it into a doll body. And then down here I'm going to just trim that off. Okay, so that's what that looks like. It's super cute. I like it. And it's going to go on with this, like that. And before I put it on there, where these little X's are, where you put the, um, you poke your, pierce your holes through and put your brad, I'm going to go ahead and put her arms on, and I'm going to put the arm behind so it doesn't um, impede the tag that's going to be on the top. And I'm going to put my purse, pierce my little holes and put my brad through, but then I'm going to show you something else I'm going to do to it. So I'm taking a paper piercer and I'm going to just poke a hole where that X is through that, through the girl and through her arm. And then I'm using a little mini brad to connect the two. Like that. Okay, I'm going to take this little punch that's a heart, it's kind of a whimsical heart, and I'm going to punch out eight little hearts. And I'm doing it kind of back and forth because then I can use this piece either as a stencil. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I did nine, that's okay. I can use that as a stencil for a border or I can actually cut that strip off and use it as a border in my Tisha Moore journals. So I save everything. Anyway, these cute little hearts, they're darling. I had an idea. So what I want to do is kind of make some little ruffly cap sleeves and I'm going to just take these and glue them to the back here and layer them so that when you put it on the doll, it's going to make little sleeves. I know it sounds confusing, but I'll show you. So I'm going to just put a little glue across the edge. I'm using Art Glitter Glue. It's my favorite. I love it. And then I'm just going to take this and about halfway through I'm going to stick these little hearts on here and crisscross them. Like that. I'm going to do it on both sides. So really I only needed four. I used, I cut way too many of them, but that's okay. I'll find somewhere else to use them. And that's cute. So then what it's going to look like is little sleeves that cover those brads. So the brads will still be movable, but you won't see them. It covered up her little shoulders and made it look like little sleeves. I think that's cute. Cute, cute, cute. And I think what I'll do is flip this over and I think I'll put them at the bottom and make the little bottom of this outfit look lacy and match those sleeves using the rest of these little hearts. I like doing these paper dolls because it's just a quick and easy project and I don't ever have a plan. I just start decorating them and doing it and they kind of just take shape like this. You know, I didn't really have a plan for this, but it kind of comes together and just manages to take shape. So that's them glued to the back, but then look how cute that is on the front. It made her dress complete. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> so they don't look like hearts anymore. No, they just look like petals almost from flowers, and that's what it made for her dress. Next I'm going to use my crocodile, and I'm going to put eyelets where these X's are at the top of the legs, and I'm using these kind of oval eyelets. I think they were probably um, representative of being Easter eggs 
for scrapbooking. Again, I'm de-stashing my scrapbooking stuff. I don't scrapbook anymore. I do art journals, and sometimes I add my photos to my art journals, but I don't do the traditional kind of scrapbooking anymore. So you just punch a hole, and then you, then you put the eyelet in the hole. You slide this forward, and... set the eyelet like that. So I'm going to use super tiny skinny ribbon to attach these legs to this body and I haven't glued it to the upper part yet because it's easier to work with when they're separate. So I'm going to go ahead and do this first. And you want to go front to back with the ribbon. So you just feed the ribbon front to back through the body through those eyelets that were there and then front to back through the leg that I'm attaching. I've done this in another video on my paper dolls um, where I did the hippie girl with the wild hair. Okay, and then you're going to flip this over. Make sure your ribbon is nice and flat and all going the same direction just so it'll look nice. like that so it's nice and flat. Let me zoom in. And then you want to get it right in the center of the ribbon. And you're going to tie the ribbon. And however long you want that leg to dangle, about that long is where I want it. That's where you stop and you tie a little knot. So you've now completed the circle. Like that. So it's front to back, it's a loop you can see. And then you take these two tails, when you flip it over again, you take the two tails and you bring them around to the front and you tie them and make a bow. And what you've done is created the, I'm not sure that I even want a bow. I don't know. Let me try the other one and see. But when you tie it, see, now you've attached this leg and it dangles. And the ribbon becomes a ribbon loop, a ribbon attachment. Instead of using um, an, a jump ring or a piece of chain on jump rings, you could do that as well. That looks really cute. But... I thought for the space, this would look best to use ribbons. So I'm going to go ahead and touch the other leg the same way. So now I'm going to glue the body to the torso, the dress, and I'm not going to glue these spots where these brads go on her shoulders. So I'm going to just kind of glue it around the collar and then down and in the middle. So that way it doesn't um, keep those brads from being movable to move those arms. Just like that. Super cute. She's super cute. And the next idea I have is to take, these are butterflies, they're on little um, wire stems. They are, you can find them in your craft store or your dollar store. I think, I think these might have come from Dollar Tree dollar store. And um, they're meant for doing like flower arrangements or putting on a sticking into the foam on a wreath, things like that. And I just thought these would make such a cute butterfly girl. So I'm going to take one of these. I'm not sure which one yet. I need to see which one looks better. Look how cute that is for adding wings. So cute. In fact, I think the orange would even be better. Yep, I like the orange because there's orange in the flowers here from that napkin, so I'm going to use the orange ones. So what I'm going to do is just um, take my wire cutters. Oops, I didn't even need them. I just remove that wire and take my little scissors, and I'm going to see if those will come out too. Yep, 
pull out the antennas. Don't need those. And I'm going to leave it just like this because since this is a paper doll that's not doesn't need to be flat, it's not going in a journal, it's going to be hanging from my paper doll tree. It doesn't matter that it's kind of thick. It'll kind of give it some weight and balance. And these are made out of feathers, if you can see that. They're bird feathers that they dyed colors. And so I'm going to just put some glue on that and I am going to glue these to the back of my doll. Now I'm clamping it with a clamp so that it can um, stay in place and dry. In fact, I'm going to use two clamps just to really get that to dry in place. And my final step is always to decorate. So I went to my stash of um, ephemera and found some butterflies. And this one's pink. I don't want it to be pink. So I'm changing it to orange using some Arteza, an Arteza brush marker. And that way it'll match the wings on her back. And I think I'll add some orange to these flowers. They already have orange in them, but I'm going to make them brighter. These are great. These little Arteza brush pens are so fun for the kind of fun little details. See how that just pops, makes a little bit of brighter. I'm going to add some orange in here. So that's pretty. And then what I'm going to do is just, um, I'm going to take that piece of wire that was the antenna it's actually not wire, it's plastic, so I'm going to just cut it in two. I don't think it'll bend. Let's see if it'll bend. Maybe. I think it will bend. So I'm going to just bend it in half. And I'm going to take some pliers, I think, and squeeze it so it's stays pinched. Oh, perfect. And I'm going to flip this little butterfly over and put those antenna, put a dot of glue and add that little plastic piece to the back so it has little butterfly antennas. Just like that. And I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. Needs a little more glue. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to add these butterflies, find a place to put them. I think I'll put one right in the middle. That orange one would look really cute. It will kind of look like this is a waistband. Glue that one there. Super cute. Oh my gosh, she's cute. She just looks cute. I think I'll put this blue one down here. Kind of half on and half off. This is always my favorite part, adding those cute little details to everything. <clears throat> I like to take glossy accents by Ranger and I have them in a little fine point bottle and I put those on her lips to make her lips glossy. So it's all these cute little fun details that you add that makes your girl special. I like how her face turned out. The face is kind of plain so you can color it and make it look any way you want to on the pattern kit. And I printed it on a cream or a tan colored cardstock when I printed it out. Okay, that's cute. See, now that has those little antenna. And I'm going to put that right here at the top of her head. So you can still see her cute little headband, but I want to adorn her with a butterfly. so cute. And I'm going to take some black Nouveau Drops. It's shiny and kind of looks 
um, shiny and, and uh, opaque and I'm going to cover the tips of her shoes in that because then it'll just make her shoes look like they're patent leather. And they'll be really glossy and shiny. It's almost like glossy accents only with color in it. And if they're by Tonic, Tonic Studios. And then it does take a while for that to dry, so I'm going to leave it laying flat while that dries. For the hanger, I'm just taking a piece of embroidery floss, and I'm going to figure out how long I want the hanger. I want it to be able to go over branches, so I'm just going to tie a knot in the tails. Snip it off and then put a dot of glue on the back of her head and glue the hanger to the back of her head. So this is how she turned out. There's a butterfly on her head, on her headband, and her wings made of feathers, and her cute little dress that was out of a scrapbooking tag that I added napkin to, and then punched out hearts for the bottom of her dress and the sleeves of her dress. She has her little movable arms, her little ribbon attached legs. And all I need to add now is just a hanger because I am going to um, hang her on my paper doll tree. So I hope you enjoyed this and had fun and maybe it'll give you some ideas to look around, see what you have, and see what you can put together to create a fun paper doll with. Thanks for stopping by. Until next time, have fun. Go make art, because art soothes the heart.